There's a small gap, so especially when you pull on it, you open up. You can see the videos over here. Thank you for the overwhelming uh, comment and um, suggestion, especially those of you who are experts in this field, providing the um, advice for everybody in this pandemic. I've, I've done some more research and I have some more idea on how to um, prevent this, this gap. Especially when this gap doesn't really help with the situation because there's a lot of asymptotic patients who are not showing any sign of uh, symptoms. So we should really, really be careful about um, protecting yourself and others around you. So the top suggestion I have, and probably the easiest one, is um, you wear another surgical mask on top of um, the N95. And this is a suggestion based on this uh, valuable um, commenter who, whose name's here and uh, I'll, I'll give kudos to him because he actually went to a hospital and, and he saw the nurses doing that. So that's why I think that's probably the, the most straightforward thing to do. So you just put a, put a regular mask on, make a small pinch, making sure everything is symmetric. You can do it in front of a mirror also. And after that, so every time you wear it, kind of bring it like this. There's a there's other video you can watch to to see details step by step how to wear this mask. But this is what I like to do. Start off with the chin. So make sure the the bottom is at your chin, and the top part is above your nose. If you see here, you can adjust it a little bit. Just pulling the side of the band. But you want to make sure everything is covered, and you can you can breathe normally. Even if the the gap might still show some type of um, leakage, as at least it is being uh, filtered by the another layer of surgical mask. So I think this is a good way. This is a close-up. This is the side of how it looks like. If you can do a close-up. Okay, now we got the light right. So this is the side you want to make sure everything is sealed. And then use two hands pinch the nose part a little bit, but not too hard. Here is getting really messy. So I've actually been testing on multiple different versions for the past two months. And these are the different type of versions I've found so far. Please let me know what you think and if you have any other better suggestions. <sighs> The most simple and straightforward method is this. Just try to glue this part directly to the center. So I'll put the glue right here, just so it can spread out across the beans here. And also I'll put a, a couple glue on the bottom because the top part is relatively secure, but not the bottom part. That's the loose part. Okay, let's do it. That's it. See, it's dry. And if you blow on it, it's not moving at all. Okay, here. How things moving? For the third method, so we first need to remove the cap on the valve from the outside to gain the access to the inside structure. By using a small tool, you can slowly pry your way around the cap in the inside of the valve structure, just like this. There we go. Just 
just a plastic sheet, rubber sheet. Probably better to just seal it off. You came to just seal off this part. I have to try. And then we put this back. And just press down gently. Use the light. Okay. Okay, it looks dry. Now you can see it's dry and if I blow on it, I mean and if I touch it it's pretty much sealed off. Nothing changes now. I think this is probably better. Then let's put it back. Then I was thinking, what if I just make another barrier in between the valve right now? Maybe that will even be more waterproof. So for the fourth method, it's similar to the third one. Instead of um, just gluing the valve, we actually put a piece of saran wrap in between the valve and the cap. Here we're using the original valve cap to secure the serum wrap so the glue can be more securely sealed. Now you can see there is a serum wrap in between the cap and also the mask itself. So when you blow air on it, <laughs> the part inside doesn't move that much. And the cap is also very very securely uh, glued so it's not going to drop or anything if you wear it normally. Okay, now let's summarize. Here are the four different methods. I think the top two, the first and second one, which is adding another mask and also glue of the valve from the inside, it require very little effort. However, for the first method, because you're wearing two masks, so it's actually kind of hard to breathe. As for the third and the fourth method, even though you need to take off the cap, but the way you secure the valve and seal off with the saran wrap definitely feels more secure and waterproof. They do require some tools and additional time to modify the mask. So as a conclusion, the first method is the easiest and the second to the fourth method, even though it takes more time, but it's definitely um, easier to breathe without an additional mask. I've tried all four methods in the past two months and this is what I have found out so far. Hi, thank you so much for watching. Um, please feel free to leave any comment or let me know if you have any other uh, ideas and subscribe for more. See you next time. For the glue used in this video, it's called a Fiber Fix. I actually bought it from Home Depot and I was trying to find it if it's available online since everybody's sheltering in place. So it was on Amazon and it was a bad review and I take a closer look at the comments I found out that a lot of the people um, maybe experienced uh, the glue got frozen at the tip. So I just want to tell people my experience. When you got their packaging, you need to cut off the tip, the black tip in the front here. And every time you finish using it, you should clean off the tip and securely screw back the cap so it doesn't get dried up. Hope all of you are staying safe at home and find some new hacks at home and share with us. Thank you. Okay.